on Relay. Women in the KKK. White people get along better with white people. Deny they stand for hate. We have never raised our children with any hatred for anyone. But you would never be friends with a black person. We know you're a hate group. You're racist cowards. That's what you are. We go camping. We go fishing. Why can't you just join the Girl Scouts? that hatred and racism is alive and well in the United States. But why? And where does this hatred come from? Today, we will talk to young women who are proud to be members of the Ku Klux Klan. But they say they don't hate anybody. They say they are just proud of their own race, the white race. When we think of the KKK, these are the images that come to mind. The burning cross, men in white hoods, rallies that turn violent. What doesn't come to mind are the images of young women like Rachel. Rachel's 24 and she is the first female to ever become a member of the Grand Council of the Knights of the KKK. She says the KKK is a completely lawful organization that does not tolerate violence of any type. She says racial problems occur when the government forces people pe to be together. And this is Jennifer. Jennifer is Rachel's best friend, even though she is not a member of the KKK. She completely disagrees with Rachel's political views, but says they do not let that get in the way of their friendship. Thank you both for being here. I really Thank appreciate it. Now, Rachel, I'm going to start with you. Okay. How long have you been a member of the KKK? Well, I joined the Youth Corps when I was 12 and then became an adult member at 18. So what is it like for you to be a member? I mean, what are some of the beliefs of the KKK? Well, our, our primary belief is the belief that each race has the right to be proud of their people, of their accomplishments, of their culture, and of their ethnic background, whether they're black or, or uh, Mexican or Oriental or, or white. And so the organization that I'm with, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, and we're based in Harrison, Arkansas, we believe that white people have that same right and should be allowed to have the right to be proud in their race. Um, so that's, that's our primary belief. Yes, what do you want to say? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. A person with my status, and I come from two nations, as my missus is British. Mm -hmm. Now, with our children and the people, the way that it is in the United States, the way that we see the Ku Klux Klan, what would you suggest or how would you say our children and uh, people of other minorities, how would they conduct themselves with you? Just like a normal, polite person, I would hope. That's the way I treat other people. Do, do other members of your KKK organization treat black people with respect? If, if, if people in our organization do not conduct themselves in a Christian manner, with Christian temperament, and as polite, law-abiding citizens, and they don't act like, quote, white trash, then they don't belong with our organization, and we'll only accept people that do conduct, conduct themselves in a, in a polite, you know, good citizenship type way, you know. What do you, what do you think, Rachel, of mixed marriages? I personally don't agree with it, but there's no law against it, so. I've known Rachel for a long time, and I've never known her to be rude or disrespectful to anybody. But you disagree with her some of her beliefs. Totally, yeah. <laughs> what are some of the beliefs that you disagree with? Well, I, I disagree with everything the KKK stands for. But yet, you two are best friends. We've been friends for a long time. You told my producers that you think that Rachel was, has been brainwashed? Well... <laughs> From birth, I mean, she's always heard all these beliefs from her parents. How can you not, you know, believe that way? If you've been told that from day one, I just feel like, you know, maybe if she would have been, you know, in a different family, things might have been different. Yes, what do you want to say? Yeah, how can you hate people um, that are a different color and a different race? I mean, I think... I don't hate anybody. 
Yeah, but um, isn't that what the Ku Klux Klan stands for? I mean, hating people. No, why I, do you I think that's what I think that? that's what people have have been led to understand that the Klan stands for. And I don't, you know, we completely deplore hatred. We're we love our race, we love our heritage, and we're not about hatred. We're not about hating anyone. If people write to us, if they write to us and they say I hate so and so or I hate this. You know, their letters tossed in the trash because we don't want people that to write us and joining us out of people that are motivated out of hatred. If they write to us and they say, hey, I'm, I'm a white person, I love my race, I'm tired of always being denied this right, I'm tired of saying I'm proud to be white and then being labeled a bigot, then they're welcome to write to us. So, Rachel, you're saying if a black person moved next door to you, you wouldn't have a problem with that? No. Yes. I'd like to know if you say that you don't believe in hating people. How do you explain the actions of the Ku Klux Klan down in the South, where they take black people and burn crosses in front of their homes to tell them to leave? Well, how do you explain the attack on Reginald Denny when they were found not guilty? But that I wasn't an organization. The L.A. riots was not an organization. Okay, well, about the Protestants and the Catholics over in Europe. They're fighting constantly, but you can't take every Catholic and every Protestant and blame the entire sect of them for, for being violent. You just can't do it. It's, it's wrong, it's unfair, and it's completely biased. So are you fighting, I mean, with your organization, are you fighting to, to get rid of that stereotype or that what we know, what everybody knows of the KKK? Well, our organization doesn't have that stereotype. I don't know what other organizations, what stereotype they have, but, um, yeah, we're on a public campaign just like any, you know, President Clinton. He wants to be elected to president. He goes out there. He gets his message out to the people. He goes on a public campaign for people to hear what he has to say, and that's what we're doing. We have a message we want people to hear, and that's our primary goal is to get it out there, whether people agree with it or not, but we still have to try. But why are you associated with a group that is predominantly known for being a hate organization? Well, if, if, I, was, if I was the member of the, oh, I don't know, white people to stand up and yell yay for the white race, I probably wouldn't be up here on the show. But because of the Klan, because of the name recognition, it does make it easier, you know, to get our message out. It's just plain and simple. People okay. hear the Klan, they want to know about it. Okay, I'd, I'd like to introduce Anna. You've been so patient sitting there. Anna is also a member of the Knights of the KKK. She just joined the KKK one month ago because she says that they are a Christian organization that takes action and tries to change the world. She believes there would be a lot less problems if people just stayed with their own kind. Why do you think that? Well, um, like Rachel said earlier, um, you know, different people like being with their own kind, and I believe that... Um, white people get along better with white people and uh, just like older people get along better with older people. Yes. Stand up. I'd like to know, Rachel, do you have any children? Me? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you I raise them to be white supremacists? I raise them to have an open mind and when they're old enough to make a decision on, on what they want to believe, then they're more than welcome to make that decision as I was given the same right. Stand up. I think she's full of it, first of all. Definitely. You're hiding everything. Specifically, why do you think she's wrong? She's hiding everything. She knows she should come up here and keep it real and tell us what you really think. You, can, you can't go out like that. Hold on, hold on. What do you want to ask her? Is there anything in particular you'd like to know? No, a, another comment. There is no black organization because the government just got rid of all of that. But they There's didn't do not nothing to the NAACP. KK. Excuse me? There's not an huh? NAACP. The, the NAACP Panthers. is hardly an organization fighting for, they're not fighting to gain power over everyone else. They're just fi fighting for equal rights. Well, that's what we're fighting for. All right, you know, we're, we're gonna take a break. Next up, a 15-year-old girl who is a proud member of the KKK and her mom who says it was her daughter's decision to join. We'll be right back. Frankie loves to imitate his dad, and dad, of course, eats it up. So when he saw that place called Garage, he bought it right on the spot. <laughs> 
It comes with all that garage stuff. You know, power tools, the garage door opener. Frankie loves that. Up and down, up and down. Even on his own, he was out of for hours. I mean, I actually had a phone conversation. He was so cute. He was just like John. Wake up, Dad. Wake up. I'm glad someone thought of it. Deep down inside, we knew it could happen, but uh, I think we're ready for it. I think it's just we're, we're a little scared. But I believe because of the length of time we've been together and because we know each other so well that we feel that we can face it and that we're prepared. Can we look? Shaking. <laughs> oh, I knew it. Congratulations. <sighs> you happy? Lurk in small places. Big odors linger in small places. Concentrated air wick stick up. Stop big odors in small places. Air wick stick up. Drixoral is. Sudafed isn't. Drixoral is. Tavis D isn't. Drixoral is the only cold medicine that relieves the sneezing stuffiness plus the aches and pains of a cold for 12 full hours. Drixoral. Isn't that better? You really wore out playing these games. She loves Candyland. I loved it too when I was her age. You know what was my first game? I win, Dad! And shoots and ladders. She thinks that's so funny when I fall down her shoot. <laughs> Sweet dreams, darling. Like a child's dream come true, Candyland shoots and ladders, and Uncle Wiggly too. Your child's first games from Milton Bradley. proud members of the KKK. Yes, you want to say? Yes, I would just like to, uh, to answer this young lady here. Well, whatever. When she was saying about mixed marriages, number one, this is my husband. I want to go back to what you were saying about interracial marriages. I would like a question. I'm white, he's black, and also Indian mixed. What would you class, when we also have four children, children by the way, what would you say, how would you class our children? And number two, I'm a white, you're white, but honey, you've disgraced me as for a great person of size. What would you classify their children? I don't know what I'd classify them as. They're not black and they're not white. Would they be biracial, maybe? All right. So far, all the women we have met in the clan have been adult members. Now it's time to meet Misty. Misty is a member of the Youth Corps for the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Misty is only 15 years old, and she thinks that we were better off in the 60s when everybody was segregated. And this is Bobby, Misty's mother. She says it was a family decision to join the Klan in January. She says nobody forced Misty to join, and that the KKK is a group of white people no different than the NAACP is for black people. Misty, what made you decide to join the Youth Corps for the KKK? Well, it's my own decision. I wanted to preserve our heritage. I wanted to stay in my race. And I wanted to preserve our heritage and our race. So, but by living your life as a white person and marrying maybe a white person, wouldn't that be preserving your heri heritage as well? What yes. do you do differently with this group than you would do otherwise? Well, different things. I mean, you don't, whenever you're together, you're like a family. You don't go out and do things. There's so much violence in the town that I'm from. We have to go to a different town. If we want to go to the movies, if we want to go out, we have to go to a different town. My Why? parents take me. Because there is so much tension, racial tension and violence and so many gang problems. And you think that's because blacks and whites are, are together in the same town? No, it's just it's the reason they do it. I don't know why. They just... Do you, do you have any black friends, Misty? Well, I was always taught that you're not impolite to them. I, I'm always polite to them. And you don't, you're not their best friend, but you don't, you're not rude to them. But you would never be friends with a black person? No. Wow. Would you be friends with someone like me? I don't have any problem with you. I mean, you're, you, you look normal to me. I wouldn't be your best friend. And I wouldn't be Is, 
Is she not normal, Misty? Are any of these black people not She's normal, normal to you? I'm not saying I would be her best friend. I'm not saying I would be her friend, but I wouldn't be rude to her. Yes. Okay, first of all, when you said that the KKK is like the NAACP, first of all, when I think of KKK, I think of crosses burning. I think of hatred. We don't burn No, at let all. me, let, give me respect, please. I gave you respect. Number two, when I think of NAACP, I think of them fighting for equal rights, okay? We, we do not, we don't fight against y'all. We fight for us. We fight for what you may look at me. You may think that I'm left in the table, okay? But let me tell you something. I have nothing against you. I don't even know you. I don't have nothing against you. You may look at me left in the table. Let me tell you something. Allah was the first God, not Christ, okay? You, are, you, are, you originate from us. You originate. Black bones were the first bones fell. Africa, you originate from us, okay? Yes. Okay, I'm here with my two white friends, Maria Elise and Nina. Thanks for being here, ladies. There's nothing wrong with black people and white people mixing. I really think racism is due to ignorance, and people need to learn to live together. What do you think, Bobby? You're her mom. What do I think? I mean, I have a problem. You said that she made the decision on her own, but she st still is 15 years old. I assume she lives with your family. That's right. You chose to join this group, so she really had no choice. I mean, she, she was going to follow her family. Right. Well, I would rather my daughter use her own mind and her own decision in deciding what she wants the rest of her life to be. We have never raised our children with any hatred for anyone. Yes. They talk about their daughters choosing their own mind, but if they were to marry a black man, that's not their own choice, because the mother would strictly disown their child and make them feel guilty of that judgment. So, there's a, there's a, there's, the feelings do not, the connection between the mother and daughter are not the same. Yes, it you know. is. But How many yes, other races have disowned their children for marrying another race. I know several. There are just as many blacks that do not want their family to marry into the white race or any other race. Missy, why do you say it was better in the 60s? First of all, you weren't born in the 60s. But segregation was better. They didn't have violence. My mom was alive in the 60s and they didn't have violence then. You, you say I that... Think, I think what she means is it's not that segregation was better because we don't believe the government should force their will on anyone. There should be no laws forcing anyone to live together or separate. So we are opposed to segregation, but I think what she means, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that there was less violence during the 60s and less, less violence than there are now. Rachel, I have to ask you, what do you, what do you think of the Holocaust? Do you believe that the Holocaust never existed? I don't, I don't, personally, I don't think it did, no. There's been documentation, there's been tons of documentaries, well, and... that would, that would be a whole different show that, you know, I'm not going to get into it now. It's my personal opinion on the facts that I've seen, so... Yes, but, but Germany that. and the German government has admitted that's, that it happened. That's a different, different topic. We'll discuss it another time. Okay, stand up. I am, um from three different religions. And I think all y'all, except the one on the end right here, is all screwed up because first of all, first of all, no matter, no matter, no matter where you think you're gonna go, no matter what country you think you're gonna live in, we built this country. As black minorities, we built this country, so you're gonna have to see our faces, you're gonna have to deal with our, our bull, and you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to deal with it, period, because first God of all, built this country and he built all Regardless of God and regardless of saying, we built this country from ground up. All together as a minority, we all built this country. So what you're what, saying is racism, you, I think, is look, wrong. When you look at who built the country, you look at who, who made its laws, who formed its constitution, who made the beliefs, who made the religious beliefs. In America, uh, America is a European country but on we a are different all shore. from foreign descent. Everyone but the Native but, American Indians. We are right, all from so other all places. Of
I'm sorry. I need to, I need to go to break. I'm sorry. We'll get your response right after this. Next up, a female skinhead who wants to see America become an all-white nation. We'll be right back. On the next Ricky Lake. I need a man who can fix anything. Check out why some girls prefer a blue collar man. I like a man that can fix my car. He was just the sexiest guy in the world. <laughs> he knows what to do with his hands. It's a real manhunt. So we're going to send you out now during the show, and we hope that you'll bring back a hot guy yes, by the I end. Will. So turn it on. You can't turn me off. <laughs> oh, I'm so psyched. A blue collar man bonanza on the next Ricky Lake. A year ago, AT&T Special Country Savings was born. Now to celebrate its first birthday, we're giving you even more savings on international calls. Double the savings on Saturdays in October and November. And not just to one or two numbers, but to everyone you want to call in the international country of your choice. 30% off with AT&T. Call now to sign up and enjoy a birthday gift from us to your favorite country. You still don't have cable TV? Well, there's never been a better time to order than right now. Cable is 24-hour news. Total sports coverage. Cable is in tune, in touch. And it gets better with the uncut commercial-free entertainment of the premium channels. HBO. Showtime. Cinemax, the movie channels, installations only $9.95 when you subscribe to cable and premium TV, so call the number on your screen now to order, plus get two premium services for the price of one for one month, a great deal like this won't last forever, so call today and get connected to cable, cable TV with the premium channels, don't miss a beat. I was in an automobile accident, and I was injured. Well, you never know if you have a case unless you check into it. My baby got sick with lead paint, and they helped me with my case. You know how to talk to people, and that's very important. A consultation was free. If they say he'll get back to you, he will get back to you. He's always there for me. And it's a good feeling because I feel like he's my lawyer. The law offices of Joel H. Schwartz personal injury law. Tonight, that I love your daughter. For the first time ever. This is what I want. The Unsolved Mysteries movie. She was only 25 years old and she's lying in the ground. A family destroyed by her husband's perfect crime. He stands to get over $300,000. Her parents vowed to stop him. Whatever we have to do to get him. You want to try a case which doesn't exist. Based on the true story. He murdered our daughter, now he's trying to run away. Of one family's fight for justice. It land when that killer is behind bars. An Unsolved Mysteries movie on a special night. NBC Tonight. Hi, we are back. Rachel, it's only fair. I promise that you could respond to what was said before. Okay. Um, what, what the comment you made was about, you know, Native Americans, you know, being here and the first ones to build the country and, and so forth. The gentleman over there made the comment about, you know, minorities building the country. And while they may provide physical labor, the people that built the Constitution, the people that built the way of life that we enjoy, the people who brought the right to know your accuser of, of a jury trial of, you know, freedom of speech and everything. Those were all European, you know, ideas that were brought here. They yes, weren't from another... Yes, but it is 1993. Shouldn't this be all of our America? Isn't this all well, our country? Everybody in this room? No. Yes, you understand. First of all, Hammurabi was the first lawmaker, not Europeans, okay? Well, that's Afrocentrism. Second, excuse I'm not me. Gonna get into that. Second of all, I think that um, people of color should love themselves first and do not be so much concerned with what these people are doing. There are more people of color in the world than there are anybody else. So that if people of color 
love themselves and quit being reactionary, then we wouldn't have to respond and we wouldn't have to worry about their trial by jury and all of these things, if that is the concern. Okay. But you can't ignore the fact that there are many, many, many hate crimes in this country every year. And that having organizations like this, and I'm not saying I know that your organization sounds to me like it's different than what we know of to be the, the Ku Klux Klan. A recent Klan. FBI uh, study that was released January 4th of 1993 this year found that of all hate crimes in the United States, while white people only make up 75% of the population, what hate crimes committed by white people were only 36.8%, which is a huge difference. That's and, reported. And it's proven that hate crimes... Most hate crimes aren't reported. Well, they should be then. They, they should, should be, be, but absolutely. it's proven that they're not reported. All right, well, I want to introduce my next guest. She is also proud of her white heritage, but she is not a member of the KKK. This is June. She is 20 years old, and she is in an independent white separatist who is affiliated with many skinhead organizations. She says she is willing to do almost anything for her right, white race and would like to see North America become an all-white nation. Thank you for being here. First of all, you're in disguise. Why are you just in disguise? I'm in disguise because I grew up to respect my elders, and the path I choose to take is not the one my, which my family. They're very multi, multicultural people, and I'm doing this for them and for the protection of their business and, and their clientele and stuff, like I said, because this is a path I cho cho chose to take myself. It's a shame Being, that she should have to be scared of her life or her family's life because she gets on national I television see anything and happen speaks to her, her views. And stuff. So, and you're saying that these are not hate organizations? If you're worried that something might happen to your family People, because they don't worried, believe what you she's believe. She's worried that, that someone other than probably her white right. brothers and sisters are going to be after her family, not My family us. could be a target of something for which is my decision. Yes, stand up. I respect yeah, my uh, elders. I was taught My that. question is to you. You but do you respect do you, do you respect black people? I respect everybody. I think I really do. I respect everybody, but I think people should stick together. People in school, honestly, people in school didn't respect me. Like I never had anything against anybody, but like the, the I I grew up in a very predominantly Spanish and black area, and if I didn't speak Spanish, they wouldn't associate with me. And the and the black girls didn't they don't want to go running around with the white girls. I mean, it's it's true. They don't want to hang out. That, where I'm from, where I'm from, it's true. Yes. Where I'm, this yes. is my personal experiences. I don't know what New York is like, but where I'm from, the black girls, I'm, I don't have anything okay. against them, but that they don't want to hang out with me. That sounds maybe like you had a hard childhood growing up in that environment. Right. But uh, let's face it, the whites are still the majority. We still hold somewhat of the power. We're the majority within less than 60 years. We will be You're a minority right. You're in right. this country. I don't think time it's magazine. fair, though. Like I was saying before, um, I went to join the Army Reserves, and I have college underneath my belt and everything like that. And... There was a girl in there who was black, you know, and she deserves to go there just as much as I do. But I had the college, and she didn't, and she got the, my slot. And that, that didn't seem fair to me, because they needed a minority to go in there. And that was something I was striving for, you know? It's, so, it's just another example of government's program to push people together and to give special privilege to a few instead of equal privileges for away. all, which is what we want. We want equal privileges for all. and. Special privileges Another, for none. I just okay. want to add something real quick. Yes. It, it's not exactly fair like you say it is, and it's not just the white world we live in, because I, I see at the mall there's this, a few stores that they sell these shirts that say, you know, they have this African princess on it or whatever, and it says, I am proud to be, you know, an African-American woman. And they sell these shirts, you know, scattered in in the mall. And I don't have anything against them selling it, but I think maybe they should have something, you know, in there. For me, too, maybe, like, I am proud to be of, of, of a Euro-American, or I am proud to be from Germanic descent or Nordic or whatever. It's just, it seems unfair, you know, and I... It's unfair because blacks have a t-shirt? Yeah, it's honestly, why, 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 why can they the have whole, that? And I can't. It's the whole attitude. Excuse me, it's because it's the blacks that. are allowed to wear these t-shirts and nothing is more. said... White people think nothing of it. Okay, I you get your points. I get if your points. We, if we wear them, it's racist. Okay, yes. She spoke of, of government segregating uh, minorities and... Who said that? She did. Okay, um, Rachel. Over. Yeah, Rachel, Rachel, okay. sorry. Uh, this is proof positive that we're not segregated right here. Well, I think people in New York need to get out of New York. No, no, no. This is representative of our country and our audience. This is actually, we, we 
cool. This is absolutely representative of the of audience at home that watches this show. I don't think it's a representative of the of the nationwide public. Maybe where you live, but around the well, country. I travel all over the country, oh, and I think man, people in New York need to get out because you're pretty isolated here, and this isn't the real world. What what does your KKK? What are their goals? Our what, goals? what are they going to do with this organization? Well, well, our goals are to, are to waken people up to the fact that white people um, do not have, you know, the same right for pride. And one of the main things that people, you know, forget is, sure, sure, we're concerned about race, but we're also concerned about the federal government sticking their nose into the private lives of every person in this room and every individual in this country and forcing people to live, to work, to and, you know, to, to do things that they would not otherwise choose to do, to work where they want, employ who they want. And uh, so, you know, we want the federal government to, okay. to get out of the business of, of forcing people together. Okay. Next, a woman whose 15-year-old son was killed by the KKK. We'll be right back. the action, the power, the force. Now you can capture the feeling as if you were there by tuning into the home of the New England Patriots, WBZ, it's Radio 1030. Let's go, back. Look, look, throws. Touchdown! Touchdown! Capture the moment in breathtaking play-by-play -play from Gil Santos and Gino Cappelletti. Capture every New England Patriots game live, only on WBZ, News Radio 1030. Changeables. Pick your living room, pick your tables, pick your color lamps. All seven pieces, five ninety-seven. Changeables. Pick your living room, pick your tables, pick your lamps. Mix and match. All seven pieces, five ninety-seven. Changeables. You get it all. Pick a sofa, a chair, not one but two end tables, a cocktail, even a pair of lamps. Changeables. Over one hundred combinations at five ninety-seven. Only at Home Furniture, Dedham and Lynn. Hello. Hi, honey. I just checked in. How was the flight? Uh, bad food, good movie. I miss you. I miss you, too. You feel so alone when you're not here. Did you, uh, lock all the doors and turn on the ADT system? Yep. The last thing a burglar wants to see. ADT helps protect your home and family 24 hours a day, every day of the year, by linking your home to an ADT customer monitoring center. Call 1-800-ADT-4636. For a small monthly fee and one-time installation charge, our Safe Watch system can help protect your home against break-ins, fire, and medical emergencies. Help protect your home. Help protect your peace of mind. Call 1-800-ADT-4636. We'll see you at home tomorrow night, then. I love you both. We love you, too. We'll be here. ADT, we're home even when you're not. ADT Safe Watch, only $195 installed plus a $19.95 monthly monitoring fee. We're home even when you are not. Ask any woman what are the most mysterious things on earth, and she will tell you men. I just like to know why men fall asleep after sex and then they brag about how much they've done. On the next Les Brown show, everything you want to know about men but are not afraid to ask. If the men are so happy at home, why do they go out and cheat? And some of the answers will shock you. No matter how well endowed a man is, he doesn't think he's well endowed enough. On the next Les Brown Show, today at 3 on TV4. Did your boyfriend or girlfriend dump you? Do you want to get even? Do you want revenge on the man or woman who dumped you? Call and you could be a guest on The Ricky Lake Show. Call 1-800-906-0021. You're 23, and you're a member of the Aryan Unity Coalition. You're also a skinhead, or is that the same thing? Pretty much so. Okay, what do you believe? What do you want to add here? Well, she was talking about how, uh, you know, everyone's on these buzzwords, violence, hatred, you know, supremacy. You know, that's, that's something that's been portrayed by the media. I mean, I myself, and I'm sure they'll agree with me, supremacy isn't even in our agenda. We don't care who's superior, that's who's inferior. Sense. We want, we want to be able to intermingle with our own culture. We want our children to grow up within our culture. And we choose not to mix with other races. That doesn't mean that, okay, well, you're black, 
because you're black and you're living on my street, I'm a burning cross in your lawn and I'm gonna kill you. So you're telling me that there are uh, there are no known skinhead hate crimes? Oh, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. But I mean, you can I mean, you, can uh, you take can't. A person, there, there's plenty of hate crimes. There's plenty of hate crimes on all crime. sides. On all sides of the coin. You know, we're not going to say that everybody within our organization is is you know some saint. You know, but I'm not responsible for everyone's actions. I'm responsible for my own. And so are you a cult? Are skinheads a cult? I don't consider it a cult. I don't consider it a cult. I, you know, she was talking about the federal government and the way that they have, they have, uh, you've got forced hiring, you've got forced busing and all this. Why can't everybody compete on the same level? Everyone competes on the same level. Everyone's treated on the same level. Yes, but, but you yourself, you yourself, David, think that blacks have a plague? It is a plague on society in a way. It is definitely a plague on society. How is it a plague? The forced mixing within our society is a plague. If you force white culture, white culture was forced into, you've got the slavery. The slavery trade was a culture forced on an alien people. Yes, but how long ago was slavery? We can't be living slavery. Slavery is over 100 years ago. Was slavery a plague? Slavery. But we any, pay for I feel it every that any day. forced mixing is a plague. We, yes, Jennifer. Like, yes, we Jennifer. We pay for it too. We yes. weren't there. Excuse me, Jennifer. If these people, if they want to believe this way, let them. But why have groups like this that causes problems that's happened to these poor ladies? Let them believe that. I want to introduce Loretta. I'm sorry. I want to introduce Loretta. Loretta. Her 15-year-old son, Roy, was shot and murdered by a member of the KKK. She says her deceased son is proof that the KKK is violent. Thank you, Loretta. I understand how hard it must be for you to be here, and I really appreciate you coming here and telling us your story. What happened to your son? Uh, on May the 9th, 1990, Roy had, uh, came home from school. He was looking for, it was on a Wednesday, to graduating from the ninth grade and going to a ninth grade prom. So he, uh, talked, he said, I'm going to Walgreens, get some batteries for my Walkman. On his way back home, a man in the KK, his father was the Imperial Wizard, shot my son in the back as he was listening to his Walkman. The day of the funeral, they called the church and told me there was a bomb, so they had, bombed, they had to send people in to check the church for the bombs. Then they called and said, if you go down a certain street, we will shoot the parade up. One year later, on Memorial Day, 1991, cemetery gates opened on Memorial Day. My son's grave was desecrated. Aww. The flowers was torn to pieces. And, and it's all because of good speakers like you. Go on preaching to those young kids. Get them to join that group. The Prince of Disguise here, put it. You know you're a hate group. You're racist cowards. That's what you are. Now, Miss Missy, you're listening to what she's saying. Me, you are 15 years old. You are the same age as her son. Brother. It happened to my brother. So we know how this lady feels, okay? But a black man killed him. But I didn't join a group. Why'd you have to join a group? We didn't say you did. And we know No, I know you didn't you say feel. I did. But why'd you have to go join the KKK? Because there are so many KKK groups in the country today that most of you do not know the ones that are violent from the ones how that are, are we not. To know? Which how are we to know? Which are violent? Which are violent? The Knights of the Ku Klux Klan have they never committed Arkansas. any crime. We're the same organization that David Duke was the national director of. Our national office is in Harrison. We do not promote violence. Well, that's we what he said when he violence. put the bullet in my son's well, back. You know, it wasn't any of us that held no, the gun. No, 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 no. But I would like to give your daughter a chance. Let her live her life instead of this going around the country. Her it's your choice. But can't it you was. see what's going on? Won't you live your life day? All 
all she's trying to do. And then when you get grown, then you decide, go ahead and do it. But don't do it because your mother does it. If you have a Christian home, if you have a Christian home or a Buddhist home or a Hindu home or whatever religion you have, and you take that child to synagogue or you take that child to church or to the temple or something, are you brainwashing your children just because you share your belief with them? I don't think so. And I think that the answer is yes, and probably every person in here is, is uh, guilty of some sort of prejudice or brainwashing of their friends, family, or children. Did they go commit crime? I didn't commit crimes. No one in our organization has committed crimes. You need You're to all the same. You're yes. all the same. Just because you, cop, you just, because you just said exact, ma'am. I mean, they're all going to do it. Ma'am. We're not talking about Rodney right King. We're not talking about time. the racist, coward clan. People just, just there's always violence. You choose to hang around with the people that are violent, that's your business. But in every organization, there's her one that's son, willing to fight. Her son, excuse me, her son did not choose to hang around violence. Right. Well, that's unfortunate that it happened. Well, there's, there's plenty of, of, it, of white people and people of all races people, who, who get killed from, and gang from violence some or whatever, gang violence every day. or something. They, they did. not choose so to be in that. So now you're a gang. The Klan is a gang now, no, right? No, it's not. No, it's right. not. A year after the birth of my second child, this lady patted me on the stomach and said, Oh, when is the blessed event? That was what sent me to Jenny Craig. I found the Jenny Craig cuisine so convenient. It taught me what a healthy portion is. When you're halfway to goal on Jenny Craig, you gradually start cooking your own food, and it's such an easy transition. Now it's like, oh, it's so simple, but now it finally makes sense. Join now and lose 10 pounds free. And for every new program, we'll donate $10 to Race for the Cure. Call Jenny Craig. Peter, buy the treasure. Wendy, Furniture City is having its 30th birthday. They're giving away thousands of prizes. Over 20 color TVs. Curses, everyone's a winner except me. A walker, sofa, chair, party ottoman, two end tables, a dining table, and four chairs. This 11-piece package for the unbelievably low price of $499. Furniture, Furniture City's package pricing. New Bedford, Fall River, Malden, Quincy, Brockton, and West Roxbury. When you need a second mortgage, there's only one phrase you need to hear. Hello? Mr. Anderson, your loan was approved. Call the Personal Mortgage Corporation at 1-800-DIAL-PMC. Mr. Jackson, your loan was approved. That's great. No weeks of waiting, no application fees. You'll get an answer in 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, approved. Don't worry if others have turned you down. Call 1-800-DIAL-PMC, Personal Mortgage Corporation. When it comes to second mortgages, we approve. Chances are you don't need an attorney right now. But what if you suddenly do need one? You've been in an accident, on the job or in your car. That's when you need to know you can count on someone. Someone to settle things for you properly, fairly. How do you find that someone? It's as easy as picking up the phone. You can count on it. If you're injured, call the law firm of Feinstein and Forlizzi. Twenty-four. Specials at Star Market's Deli include people like Peter Tabor. No, six pounds of roast beef, three pounds of Swiss, and make that four pounds of American. Oh, slow down, Mrs. Driscoll. Four pounds of ham, oh, slice real thin, yeah. And, oh, four pounds of potato salad. Four pounds, six pounds of the bean salad, and 20 pickles. Feeding a small army? Nah, just the boys home for the weekend. It's people like Peter Tabor who make us shine. Are you ready for a divorce? Do you want to tell your spouse it's time to move on and end your relationship? If so, you could be a guest on The Ricky Lake Show. Call 1-800-906-0021. I'd like to, to meet my next guest. This is Christina Davis McCoy. She is the executive director of the North Carolinians Against Racist and Religious Violence. She says that we need to examine the issues of fear that keep the cycle of hatred going. Thank you for being here. What do you, what do you think of what you've heard so far today? 
Well, I'm really um, quite concerned that Rachel uh, and Mitzi, Mitzi are sold on this whole idea of an organization that purports to be a civil rights organization for white people. America's racial history has had a profound effect on all of us, from the landing of Columbus in the Americas in 1492, to the slave trade history, to the presence that we now have in other lands. These are real stark images that we have to deal with. Um, I think what is very real, and we have to examine it in a very historical context, also is that the Klan began in 1865 in Pulaski, Tennessee, just beyond the close of the Civil War, with the direct intent and interest to be America's native terrorist, to raise people of color, black people, back into check. So that regardless to the names of organizations who carry themselves under that banner, they also must embrace the history of violence that goes along with that organization. And I think that that's real. I think that what is also real mm -hmm. is that Americans are hurting across the board. Native Americans are hurting, black people are hurting, people of color are hurting, and white people are hurting. White people are hurting. White people are hurting today in many ways and in larger numbers than they have in three decades. And let me say and to you that that's due this to the economy, that's due exactly. to... Exactly. And so that what, so you're saying that they're scared, well, they're... I think that there's a lot of fear. It's, it's fear-based, um, based on dwindling economic resources. Jobs. Jobs, um, loss, displacement from homes. Um, my sense is that that's a real um, validation and justification for why there's a need for civil okay. um, rights organizations. Like Bobby, you wanted to say something, Bobby. Okay. I didn't want to cut you off. Yes. yes. Uh, you do know a lot about when the Klan was formed and everything. I do. Okay. <laughs> we have worked very hard to get over the image from the years past to present. Uh, and, and this woman making the comment that you're all the same just committed extreme prejudice without, without ever getting to know either any of us. But have you ever gotten to know any black person? Have yeah, you ever took, well, taken the time to meet and make friends with a black person? I have people in school that I was on cheerleading squad with and in clubs with, yes. Stand up. Stand up. You, she could fool me if she has any black friends. Really. Because I think she's got a lot hidden that she should bring out tonight. Yes. I believe that um, Rachel is a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. She's basically... Um, being all articulate and intelligent about what she's trying to say and put over to people and she's basically um, she's, un she's basically telling lies. She's trying to um, play on people's um, depression, the re um, recession that's going on and playing on young minds like this girl here. I think that you're absolutely right. I think that Rachel has learned the rhetoric of the new play and well and she articulates it very well. Yes, Jennifer. I, uh, people in our town, we're not exposed to colored people. And I feel that's sad because we don't get to, to get to know them, and that's because of what's in our team. You know what? We'll be right back after this.